Len Gilroy is on the line with us with the Reason Foundation. Reason.com is their website. Uh, after John Kasich won the Ohio gubernatorial election last fall, one of his first appointees was a guy by the name of Gary Moore to be the State Director of Rehabilitations and Corrections. Turns out that what Moore used to do was be the Managing Director of the CCA, Corrections Corporation of America, a company that not only pushes to build more private prisons, but also lobbies lawmakers. I'm quoting from an article by Scott Keyes. Lobbies the lawmakers to put more people in jail. And Ohio this month becomes the first state prison, uh, the first country, the state in the nation to privatize a prison, to sell a private a prison paid for with taxpayers' dollars, land taken by eminent domain, and sell it to a for-profit prison company, CCA. So, Len, welcome to the program. Hi, Tom. Thank you for having me today. I don't understand why it is a good thing for us to be privatizing our commons. Uh, Well, thanks, Tom, for the question. Um, The reason that you're seeing a lot of interest today uh, in not only corrections in terms of privatization, but really in a lot of different facets of of public service, uh, is the the simple fact that states, local governments, and federal government, they're out of money. They're looking to partner with the private sector to deliver cost savings, uh, you know, to get higher performance through contracting than they might get in the public sector today. And, you know, policymakers are basically looking to solve these crises and in part, and not in total, but in part, uh, through, you know, creative partnerships with the private sector to, to save money. Um, but, but that so seems like nonsense. For example, in Ohio, the money that they're going to get from selling this entire prison is going to close one year's worth of budget de- deficit. It's, this is the same thing that happened when Mayor Daley privatized the parking meters in, in, in Chicago to get a whole bunch of cash over a short term and then give away this stuff for years and years. It was the same thing with the Chicago Skyway. It's the same thing with... There have been a number of privatizations around the country where governments are in trouble. You're right. We have this crisis that 30 years of insane economic policies called Reaganomics and trickle-down economics has produced. We've got a, a, a Great Depression brought about by by uh, Phil Graham pushing, you know, re- repealing Graham, uh, with the Graham Leach Bliley, repealing the Glass-Steagall Act, and, and with the Commodity Futures Modernization Act, making it possible for, for Enron, which his wife was on the board of, and others to make billions at the cost of wiping out the entire economy of the United States. I got that. And states are desperate for funds. And you've got a bunch of right-wing cranks funded by the Koch brothers through ALEC that have done things like in the state of, of uh, Oregon said, you have to have a two-thirds majority to raise taxes, uh, you know, on on anybody for anything, and said so. The state is like stuck. You know, I get that. You know, the conservatives have have created a disaster and put a lot of states in a box. What I don't get is why they would be so desperate as to sell off the commons. I mean, the whole point of we the people, the reason the founders created this country, was to provide for the commons and our prisons. If I mean, if nothing else, our our police, our firefighters. Our courts and our prisons are part of the commons. Well, Tom, you have a lot of, 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 of issues there packed within that statement. So let me kind of go back to your one of, you know, a couple of the major themes. Um, first, I mean, you mentioned uh, divesting a public asset and then spending the proceeds. And, you know, I think that you'd see a lot of fiscal conservatives that would agree with you that... Well, give me one example where that hasn't well, happened. Okay, well, the Indiana Toll Road, when uh, Governor Daniels leased in, in the state of Indiana, leased the Indiana Toll Road to uh, private investors, uh, concessionaires to operate, uh, they invested the proceeds of that, which were, you know, about, about $3 billion or so, into an interest-bearing account that was dedicated to transportation assets um, over a long term, delivering new transportation that the state did not have funding for. Okay, so uh, here, here's that's a really that's... simple question, then. Why would any company buy or, or lease, uh, take the lease on, the Indiana Toll Road if they didn't think they could make money on it. And if they well, can make I'm, money on it, why shouldn't we, the people, be making money on it? Well, because actually what you find in the public sector is that in, in those situations in which governments are running enterprises, and whether you want to look at you know the post office or uh, a turnpike system, a toll road system, or a state-run liquor store operation, what you tend to find is that, you know, take aside the ideological question of should the state be in that business in the first place, and we might disagree on that. Um, I would say, no, government shouldn't be in the business of business. But, um, you know, let's take that aside. 
um, what you find is that government, uh, under political pressure to do things like keep rates low, to keep prices from resembling what a market price would look like, uh, what you find is that they will keep prices low and then underinvest in the asset to the point where you have water systems, uh, uh, toll road systems, etc., that literally start to crumble under the public sector. I call it the you know, sort of the public sector infrastructure death spot. What you're describing yeah. is Reaganomics. I mean, this is this is the what politicians, first of all, that you mentioned the post office, had there not been poison pill legislation in 2006 passed by Republican Congress and George W. Bush that forced the post office to, over a 10-year period, fully fund health retirement benefits for people 75 years from now, people who have not even been born, the post office would be showing a $1.2 billion a year surplus right now. That was a crisis that was manufactured by government. Just like Medicare. Had the Republicans not pushed through Medicare Part D, the drug program, and then said, and we're not going to fund it, and you can't negotiate prices with pharmaceutical companies to buy it wholesale, you have to buy full retail. Another poison pill. So, you know, I'll give you that... that conservatives have over and over and over again, instead of having an honest discussion about programs they don't like, they've sabotaged them. You know, Bush didn't like FEMA, so and put a, instead he fired the guy that was running FEMA under Clinton and doing a brilliant job and replaced him with a guy who was the lawyer for a horse uh, show, the judging company. I mean, the, the, but that that does not justify selling off our commons. And it doesn't establish any kind of a precedent. I mean, the, the post office has been doing just fine since the formation of this country, thank you very much. Uh, the, 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 the military functions just fine. You can argue that it's being used in inappropriate ways, but that's by civilian control. You've got uh, you've, you, the IRS operates just fine. The Social Security Administration has never missed a check, and it's going to be solvent for the next 24 years, a small tweak, and it's solvent forever. You've got all these government programs that actually work better than the private sector. And the proof of that is look at the health care in any country, in any developed country in the world, even some of the undeveloped. Look at Costa Rica. Look at the health care around the world where the profit motive has been taken out. Switzerland, for example, doesn't have a national health care system. It's all companies, but they if you try to start a for-profit company to offer primary health care in Switzerland, they'll throw your ass in jail. Um, and as a consequence of that, they're caught, their health care costs are half of what ours are. Where, whereas we've got people like you know Bill McGuire making a billion and a half dollars off United Healthcare. I mean, this is and that, that should be our commons too, health care. Well, uh, Tom, I, you know, you've got a lot of issues there. I think, but basically, where we made no, I don't. It's a on one the, essential thing. Well, on the one, I think that the, we might have different frameworks here that uh, are different lenses to which to view what the term the commons means. To me, um, you know, for instance, let's use. Uh, let, I'll give you two examples. You know, would you consider New York City Central Park to be? you know, some privatized operation that is off limits to the common. Well, what no. we're talking about no, here no, are no. prisoners. Can I, can I, can I finish? And prisoners and, are human and, beings. They're members of our society. They're citizens of our country. And they are, and they should be. And the facilities in which they are held should be considered part of the be, commons. They will still be held in those facilities under, in Ohio. They will still be held in those same facilities. It's just a question of who owns the actual brick and mortar of the building. No, it's a question of who profits over them. For, a for-profit company has one goal, and and you have to acknowledge this, uh, if Len. If a for-profit company doesn't if, deliver on cost savings, if they don't deliver what they promise, I guarantee you they are not going to make a profit. Uh, so you're, you're offloading risk as well in these sorts of situations that the public sector and taxpayers, us, would normally bear. And, you know, I, I just I, think I, the I, idea I of making go, money off prisoners is reprehensible. Prisoners should be real, rehabilitated or they're going to cost society. They shouldn't be an opportunity to make money. Well, Tom, I agree with you fully on your last point, which is okay. that prisoners should be rehabilitated and we should be spending less and putting more putting. This is people. the Tom Hartman program. Len Gilroy, Reason.com. You can read all about it. Len, thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot, Tom. Appreciate it. 15 minutes past the hour. 